When I was growing up, all I said is you could be whatever you want to be. That's what my parents told me. Like, you could be whatever you want to be. So... Yo, so I'm gonna make this a two-part series. It's gonna be part one, why you should open a CrossFit gym, and part two, why you should not open up a CrossFit gym. I don't know if you picked up on this trend of watching me do these things, but I don't really have a plan. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? There's no plan, I have an idea, I get a topic, either it pops into my head at some point in time and I sit down and I start talking about it, mid-workout, whatever, or somebody sends me an idea and then I formulate this plan, but I don't really have too much of a script to go off of. This one, it's loosely, you know, yeah, a topic and then I talk about the topic, but I do have thoughts. I was an affiliate owner. I was an affiliate owner from 2014 through the butt end of 2019. So it's about five years. And throughout that five years, I learned just about every single lesson that you could learn as an affiliate owner. The ups, the downs, and I'm going to start talking about them through reasons why you should own an affiliate. So the number one reason that you want to open up a CrossFit gym is probably because you believe in the stuff. Greg Glassman created the message. The message was that Functional movements performed constantly varied and at high intensity are going to lead you down a path that bring you and everybody that you will be coming to your gym to the best version of themselves. It's something that you don't see in the everyday gym. You don't see it at a Globo gym. They're over there doing their curls and their leg extensions and their end goal is to look as good as possible. Now, there are a very few subset of people who you will see doing that and they're thinking that it is the correct path towards being a fit and healthy human being. But for the most part, they're not really gonna be getting any healthier or fitter and it's definitely better than sitting on the couch doing nothing. But really going on a walk at a, you know, a high effort walk level is going to be better for your longevity than going to the gym and doing bicep curls. I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that. And CrossFit with its methodology and it's putting things into functional movements and things like doing Cindy where you're doing five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, and 15 air squats for 20 minutes. It's just for as primal as it is, it's also revolutionary considering the, the way that people look at fitness. Take somebody out of that gym and say, hey, go do this. And they're shocked at how hard it is to do 10 rounds in 20 minutes. And once they stay there for a little while, I see people who are just your average everyday person getting upwards of 20 rounds, which is twice as much as the best in shape person at a Globo gym. And that's stuff that really wasn't around until somebody like Greg Glassman came and put it into words for everybody. And that's why there are upwards of 15,000 affiliates pushing this message because it is the way to get health across at a price point that makes sense. Every single one of these classes is run small group wise and paying 150 bucks a month. You're paying 150 bucks a month and you can show up 30 times at a lot of these places. So you do the quick math on that. You're getting a trainer then for $5 a day, which is pretty damn good. Considering if you wanna get anything close to that, it's probably gonna cost you $100 a session. And if you do that every day for a month, you're paying three grand a month for something where they're basically telling you to walk on a treadmill and do bicep curls. Because what do you want? You want to look good naked. What does CrossFit do for you? It makes you look good naked. So it's the best fitness program on the planet. And that was the first thing coming to mind when I wanted to get into owning and running a CrossFit gym. This is one that I kind of fell into. So after I had owned the gym, one of the best things that you could do and feel was that sensation when you're going to bed and you know that you like what you're doing. You know that you made a difference. You'll think about the individuals who were coming on in and maybe they didn't feel so good about whatever was going on that day. And I believe it was a Pat Sherwood quote at first, maybe, but he said, make it the best hour of your day. I'm not sure where that came from. It's one of those OG CrossFit gym owner people, but it's something that I also would always push. It was very important to me that when somebody would come in, I was like, okay, I got this person for one hour. I don't care how much they squat. It'd be great if they have a good squat day. It'd be great if they have a good workout. But if anything, if they come on in feeling one way and I can make it minusculely better, then I felt good about that session. You know what would happen? Those people would stay for a long time. If I was the owner of the gym for five years and was affiliated with that gym for seven, over the course of those five to seven years, I would see that those people tended to stay a long time. The people who I could touch upon every single time and say, hey, every hour that you're coming in and by 11 o'clock class, I would see that you would feel better and better and better and better. 
And what would end up happening with that better feeling was their performance would get better. They would end up looking better. They would do the things that I wanted the gym to do in the first place, which was express the best sort of fitness methodology in the world. So it's like the two things worked synonymously with one another. That was very important, which is why they're one and two. So number one, which was it was the best fitness program in the planet. Number two was I wanted to go to, I liked going to bed feeling good about it every night. I went to bed feeling good every night knowing that I did everything I could to make the people and the members who were coming to my gym feel as good as they could feel. I knew I was making a difference. I knew really for no other reason that they just seemed happier upon the entering of the gym. So if I knew a person, they came on in, maybe they were unhappy with certain things, their health, their fitness, their life, whatever. Fast forward maybe a year or two and they had still been coming in. They were just the happiest person ever. It was just Something that was really cool. Some reason that I really like owning the CrossFit gym. Now to build off of that one would be number three, which is you are going to beat the best people you'll ever meet. I don't know if this is, I've had people in my comments say, you know, you talk a bunch of crap and you're only seeing the things that people are willing to say. And there are people out there who probably really don't like what you're doing to the community. And I'm like, ah, well, whatever. You know what? That is probably also the way that I feel I've met the best people ever is I am a fitness minded person. This is my freaking garage. My garage has all this fitness crap in it. I freaking cases of water inside. I don't drink alcohol. And those are my types of people, the people who would do crap like this and only drink water and not drink alcohol and have protein prioritized in each meal and hey what do you want to do on vacation well where's the most closely located crossfit gym that we can attend not what clubs and bars and shit are around like that's not what's interesting to me so when i owned the crossfit gym i would see people who were like fitness minded people coming on in and we would just you know we wouldn't bump heads we would do that whole thing again where it's just a synonymous awesome flow of we ended up being good buddies so not only did i have like 150 160 members i had 150 or 160 good friends so when they showed up to the class, it was good to see them. I think they'd like to come and see me too. That's not something that you could say about like many workplaces, many jobs, many businesses, many businesses. They happen to be friends just because they work together and they see each other every day. But these people, I actually look forward to seeing. I'd have my 11 o'clock class. That was, so Ben Bergeron, who I have words about, and I'll talk about those, said he would run a 7 a.m. class every day. So for me, that was the 11. I would run the 11 a.m. every single day. That was my hour. I've run other hours, of course, but that was my hour no matter what. And people, I'd be like, oh, hey, here's my people. So there'd be upwards of 20, 25 of them who would show up. And when they would show up, they knew what to expect. I knew what to expect. And when they weren't showing up, I would also like worry about them. Like, where are you guys? Like, why didn't you show up? I haven't seen you in a week. Or I'd say, hey, nice haircut. And like, this is just the type of stuff that happens with this sort of thing. When you're owning the gym, seeing the same people every day, it's a cool sensation. And then this is another one where I can build into my next point, which is that I look forward to going into work. How many times do you hear the story that you don't like going into work? Oh, I got my nine to five and you know what? I gotta go to bed. I went to bed too late, watch Netflix too late, and now I didn't sleep well enough. Fast forward, rewind, it's nine o'clock, nine to five, hit my lunch break time, stamp the clock, and I did that for a little bit. I sold cars before I did the CrossFit gym thing. My first job out of college was car salesman. And when I sold cars, I would have to put the stupid suit on. I have to put the stupid suit on because it's just the status quo of the job. If you don't wear the suit, people don't think of you as highly, which is really weird because underneath the suit shows like, like what type of person you are in my opinion. Like I look like I take care of myself. I would roll my sleeves up, I remember, in the freaking buttoned up shirt because I just like to have my shirt rolled up and then, hey, I roll your sleeves down. I go, I was a little toolie out of college and I don't know, maybe I still am, but I'm like, but my arms look good like this. And they're like, yeah, but it's not the code, the dress code. And I'm like, screw your dress code. I didn't last there very long. I actually left that job because the last car sale I, that I did, I ended up making like four grand on it, but I had to really really screw over this family. I had to get them like three separate financing options that were upwards of like 24, 25%. And when the financing options get higher and they want all of the insurance and add-ons, then all of a sudden the person selling them the car makes a bunch of money. That never really sat well with me. It's not something I looked forward to going into doing. And it's also the reason why the CrossFit gym was so good because when I went into the gym, I looked forward to making people better. I didn't look forward to screwing people out of money because they wanted the luxury package on some car. 
and I didn't look forward to wearing a suit, I liked wearing freaking shorts and a t-shirt. Maybe there's a level of professionalism that I should have held a little bit higher, but it didn't seem to matter when the other things were at the top priority. So that was the fourth thing, was I liked looking forward to going into work every single day. And the final thing that's cool about owning the CrossFit gym is it is a rather low barrier to entry business to get into. Generally, when you start up your own business, it's quite a bit of money. This one I actually bought into, so I didn't open it myself. I bought into it, I bought equity in the place, and then I bought some more equity in the place until I had a bigger stake in the gym. Once that happened, it was myself and my business partner. If I wanted to do something to the place, I could do something to the place. Like this bench was here, and that's where it always has to go. That's not where it had to go anymore. It was my gym. I could put it over there. I could put all the benches over there. And if the rack is here and I wanted it over here, I would just move the whole rack over there and I would do this. It was just my favorite thing. And it became kind of a joke. The members would go in and he goes, all right, where did Andrew put all the crap now? Hey, I'm going to tape the floor so that it, this is where these things go. And you know that this is where the benches go. This is where the GHD goes. So the GHD has these legs, right? And I taped lines on the GHD. So if you move the freaking thing, you put it right back within the duct tape lines. And it worked. Like people put the things in the spots. People respected that. I could make my own hour. So I told you I had the 11 o'clock hour every single day. That was my thing. So long as we had a really good coaching staff, which we did, all the people that worked with me were awesome. I had a pretty good flow from like the 16 to 18 years where it was I would do a 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. and a 9 a.m. And then I would run next day's evening classes, which were 3, 34, 35, 36, 30. And I would flip flop the days where I'd get other times to work out or I'd have other times to work on the business or I'd have other times to live my life for a, some of that time, depending on how busy the gym was, how many coaches we had, and that sort of thing. You really didn't, don't have an option a lot of the time to make your own hours when you have a job. So this, although it was my job, it was also my gym and I could decide when I wanted to do those things. The final thing was I could decide the pricing. Just three of the things that you have control of when you own your own CrossFit gym. So a quick little recap, things that you're able to do as a CrossFit gym owner that I think are awesome and there are reasons that you should open up a place is that there is no freaking better methodology in the world. You want to push it. You want to push it because there's also no better way to get all of this awesome information to all these people. You get to go to bed every day knowing that you did something good with your life. You're not going to bed thinking... Well, you know, if I hadn't done this deal, Russia wouldn't have bombed the Ukraine and this is all my fault. I could go to bed thinking, okay, I made this person feel good about themselves and it helps you sleep well at night. You're going to meet some of the best people in the world that you ever met. Because if, even if it's because that you're putting yourself into that situation, that's the only way you do anything anyway. You put yourself into the situations to make yourself happy. You have to look forward to going to work, which is something that I know a lot of people don't do. You hear people complain about work all the time and don't really understand because when I was growing up, all I said is you could be whatever you want to be. That's what my parents told me. Like, you could be whatever you want to be. So thing number four was I get to go to work doing what I want to do because I grew up thinking I was going to be what I wanted to be. I don't know why people end up doing stuff they don't want to do. It makes no sense. And the last thing is when you own your own CrossFit gym, you get to freaking control everything to an extent to degree. And that's going to be something that I can kind of address in the next video, which are the reasons that you don't want to open up a CrossFit gym. And believe me, there's plenty of those as well. But what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to, uh, like I said, I can talk about things after I pull people in. So there's the clickbait crap and then there's the good stuff. So I'm going to start off with the good reasons here. And then there's also the reasons you shouldn't open up a gym. And with the ones where you shouldn't open up a CrossFit gym, it's not going to be like, hey, I'm going to crush your dreams. It's going to say, this is things that you may need to think about and consider before you go about going down that route. Like clearly, this is my thing right now. I didn't go and open up another CrossFit gym, and I'm not in that other CrossFit gym for probably those close to being the reasons I'll address in that video. And until then, if you like the video, like and subscribe to the freaking channel. There's people who, there's, like, these videos get like thousands of views. If they didn't get thousands of views, I wouldn't keep freaking making them. But if you watch it, like, subscribe, like, and subscribe to the video so that I can make more and you get notified about them. That'd be cool. And until then, Andrew Hiller taking a breath. Someone said, Andrew, you gotta learn how to breathe. Good at breathing and workouts out of videos. Andrew Hiller, bye.